Okay, so we have a couple more dihybrid crosses to do, still working with chicken combs. What have they given us now? These are two, this is a chicken mom and a chicken dad, and we need to know what gametes they produce. Here we can get big R, it's definitely going to be big P, so it's either big R, big R, big P, or little r, big P. That's all we can possibly get there. And from this one, we get, it's definitely going to be little r, and it's definitely going to be big P, so not much variety in this one. So, we get a 2 by one Punnett chart. I started to say square, but it's not a square in this case. Big R, big P, little r, big P, and crossed with little r, big P. So, heterozygous for R, homozygous for P, and there we go. So, genotypic ratio would be 50% for each of these, or a one-to-one -one ratio for each of these. And for the phenotype, here we get the rose and P traits together, so this is walnut. This one does not have the rose trait, it's double recessive for that, but it does have the P trait, so this would be what we call a P comb. So, you could say it's one-to-one -one walnut to P, or you could say it's 50% probability of each. Or you could give it in decimals, I suppose, and say 0.5 walnut, 0.5p. Generally, we'll accept any one of those unless they specifically request one format, and I don't see that happening here. And, oh dear, double heterozygous. This is going to be a 4x4 four four Punnett square. Does that have to be a lot of work? Let's see if we can get around it. These are both heterozygous. That means when we do the Punnett square, what are we going to get? We should get 9, 3, 3, 1 is the usual proportion for this. These 9 are dominant for both. These 3 will be dominant for the first and recessive for the second. These will be the other way around. These will be recessive for the first thing and dominant for the second thing. And this 1, the 1 16th, will be recessive for both. That's the general pattern we expect to see in a 4x4 four four square. Now, by dominant for both, we mean they will have the R trait and they will have the P trait which means they should be walnut. We should get nine walnut combs out of this. Dominant for the first thing would mean big R. You know what? The way I wrote this bugs me. This is a full, ch this is a full chicken we're talking about here. It should have two of each allele. So what I should have said there is it's big R something and big P something. It, do, it will show the dominant trait for both of these, even if there may be some variation in what's in these second alleles. But anyway, it will demonstrate the, do, the dominant trait for R, which is, yes, it will have the rose trait, and it will have the P trait as well. And that makes it walnut. If it's dominant for the first thing and recessive for the second, that'll mean it has the dominant trait for R, but it has the recessive trait for P, meaning it doesn't show the P comb. It only shows the rose comb. That makes it a rose chicken. This group is recessive for the first thing, meaning recessive for the rose trait, but it does have a dominant for the P trait. I don't know how many, I just know it has one so that it's enough to show it. And that means it will have a P comb. And 1 16th of the chickens will be recessive for both things, meaning little r, little r, little p, little p. And that will produce what they call single comb. So there's our phenotype ratios without doing a Punnett square, which is kind of neat. So if you're OK with this shortcut, terrific. If you're not, hang on. I'll do the Punnett square now just so you can see how the grind works out. And I pretty confidently guarantee that this is what's going to come out at the end. So, disappearing this stuff to create space. Let's do a 4x4. Four four. That goes there. That goes there. 
Okay. I shall type this so that it looks spiffy a little bit. So we got RP. We got our little p. Little r big p. Little r little p. And going down this side, the same stuff. And so for the baby chickens, we get this. We got our little r big p big p. Concentrating hard to try to not screw up. And double recessive in the bottom right corner. Okay. There are all the offspring. And now let's switch colors a bit and let's see what these actually look like. This is big R and big P. That's walnut. Walnut. The top row is generally all dominant, so walnut, walnut some more. This is rose trait, but not the P trait, so this one is rose. And we're back to walnut. And then we get rose again, rose trait, but not the P trait, it's recessive for that. Here we get rose and P, which combines for walnut, and again. No rows this time, only P. No rows, only P. Rows and P makes walnut. Rows only. No rows, but yes for P. Whoop, where did that come from? P. And neither rows nor P gives us single. So if we count one walnut, two walnut, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine walnut. Uh, rose, we get one, two, three. P, we get one, two, three. And single, we get one. So, the 9331 worked here because neither of these traits overrides or negates the other one if you, it's possible to tell apart all three of these groups. The ones who are dominant for both things are walnut. Dominant for one makes you rose. Dominant for the other makes you pea. And dominant for neither of them makes you a single. As long as you can tell all four of those groups apart, and those are the only four groups, then the 9331 is going to hold. That wasn't the case when we had a trait for albinism that caused the color trait to just not matter anymore. That kind of broke our results. But in this case where you have four distinct phenotypes, one for each dominance grouping, then you can expect 9331 to work out. And it worked out fine here.